All right. Hello, SPD family. Welcome back Hello, to another guys. live episode of The Process. We are live in San Antonio, <laughs> Texas at the HSBA 2022 conference. I'm here with my co-host, Sterile MD, a.k.a. Denard Esnard. And then our guest today is a longtime friend and supporter of the show, Mr. Mr. Jelson of SCT Services. Welcome, guys. How are y'all doing? Welcome. We're doing good. How are you doing, Jeff? I am fantastic, man. Thanks for asking. I'm doing very well. Yes, yes, yes. So we're going into our intro now, guys, and we'll be right back as Mr. Jeffrey Wilkins some questions on entrepreneurship and his experience at the conference HSPA 2022. Stay tuned. Welcome back, guys. Okay, so we are doing live content all week long throughout this HSBA 2022 conference. The family of SPD has finally gotten a chance to get back together, and we're seeing a mix of frontline staff, management, vendors, but also an increase in independent entrepreneurs. And this is a space that Jeff is no stranger to. So we thought who better to pick their brain and ask, as new LLC owners, as new entrepreneurs, what kind of tips and tricks do you have for people coming to visit the conference? Mm -hmm. So true, so true. So Jeff, just introduce yourself to the folks, to the millions and millions of listeners out there. Hi, good morning, everybody. My name is Jeffrey Wilkins. I'm the president and the CEO of Sterile Concept Technology. We're a healthcare consultant and education firm. We teach all the classes for sterile processing. We also come to hospitals and assist with issues or problems that they may have that they need help with and assistance with. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Wow, that's a lot. So we'll get into your business in a little bit about entrepreneurship and what you guys offer. But right now, how is your experience at the conference? It's very good. I like what they set up. I like the speakers. The speakers are dynamic. The diverse speakers is what I wanted to see. Um, the topics are given the broader range that I expected, so I really like the topics. Um, I just came out of a very dynamic topic with the Sherry Green Goldberg. Gold, golden. And um, that was fantastic. And um, gave us a lot to think about. You know, grow some things that I can, got some things I can take back with me once I get back to my own establishment. So, Shangri Golden is a great speaker. Thank you. Great presentation. Yes. So, how has the, what, how will the conference be able to help you? with your business? I think there should be just a little bit more diversity with it. You know, um, I know we have vendors, but maybe we can have some areas where, you know, up and coming people who are actually speakers mm -hmm. and which I start to see it also um, in terms of people like myself that have businesses that mm -hmm. deal with consulting, you know, maybe have a segment cut out for them so they can do certain things. And I think that'd be great because you have a lot of uh, extraordinary talent. There's mm -hmm. a lot of people out here that have so much information, so much wisdom, so much experience that, you know, we don't want to stagnate them by, you know, not giving them a platform to expand that. So I think that would be very interesting. Yes. So in terms of growing young persons, um, what's your perspective? How how will Isham be able to do that? What 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 how will they what what kind of education should Isha um HSPA, sorry. HSPA be able to prov um, should provide in the conferences coming up that'll help you and young persons go um, coming into the business. Yeah, we we have to open up that door again. I think that you know what we're doing so far is good. I think there you know there's still areas that you know I can say it's still not enough mm -hmm. because we really have to expand. Um, we have to think out of the box. I see how things are becoming more dynamic, more diversified in that area, but there are a lot of people that need to on the regional circuit you know get encouraged to um start speaking mm -hmm. um maybe take um some tutelage from some other people that have already been experienced in the field being mm -hmm. mentored by some of these, these people that um know the business know how to speak in public and stuff like that mm -hmm. um i'm actually reaching out myself now to start looking at 
opportunity to start speaking. I think that, you know, maybe we can get some different topics to talk about, you know, because there's a lot that's happening with steroid processing right now. And then you look at the opportunities that are, are being missed, you know, and I don't think it's a bad thing, but we have to acknowledge that they're being missed so we can do something about them. So true, so true, because um, steroid processing is such gives you such a wealth of knowledge to go into so many different sectors. You could come in and become a nurse, you could come in and start your own business, or you could come in and excel as a manager, director, supervisor. Um, there is such a wealth of knowledge to be received within the field that will help one grow, not even only in cell processing, but just give you the foundation to go into law if you want, in terms of healthcare law going to um, um, inventing new products also. And I'm definitely entrepreneurship, not only into consulting for healthcare, but consulting for um, medical device um, manufacturing and uh, a plethora of uh, things. So tell us about your experience in business and how our cell processing helped that. Well, cell process for me was, was uh, how can I put it, it was, it was actually, a great platform, a great foundation for me. Mm -hmm. um, prior to store processing, my background was in architecture and design. Um, I got into architect. I got into uh, store processing from some things that I heard people talk about, and then things happening in my family life that I felt like I could make a difference. Never knowing that it would be store processing, but I think when I came along, I came along at the right time in terms of being mentored. Mm -hmm. and I think that had a lot to do with it because sometimes we may not see if we have any talent at all, or maybe trying to navigate our way on our own. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, that can be discouraging, but when you have somebody that sees some of those um, talents that are in you and willing to cultivate it, yeah, willing sure. to get you to challenge, to get, to be, get to be challenged by somebody else and say, hey, we understand that you, you, you're doing this, but maybe you need to look at these as opportunities. We see this type of characteristic in you. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it really works great. And I say that because, again, I, I see the, the up and coming folk that are really dynamic, very engaging, you know, on fire for doing things through our processing. Mm -hmm. And I, I agree with them 100%. And mm -hmm. I think that the other aspects of it is that I met young folk that were inventing things. They mm -hmm. were coming up because they worked in store processing and decontamination, or they worked on the processing side. And they were coming up with inventions, but they didn't know how to get it manufactured, or they didn't know how to patent it. You know, these are yes. other aspects that we miss out on because, you know, sometimes they don't have um not just the tutelage but the mentoring to say hey you can do this this is what you can do to, 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 to satisfy this and it comes up with a need you know a lot of great inventions for store processing mm -hmm. and even in healthcare has come out of a need or somebody's yes. dealing with something and they say this got to be done a different way or a better way mm -hmm. and um we need them to, to cultivate that to manufacture that and mm -hmm. get that information out to us yeah and i appreciate you bringing that struggle in and to segue into another struggle getting those things done are difficult in themselves, but what are the specific issues or my, what are the specific issues a minority um, would have trying to navigate through networking and getting those things done? Because I know as a, not to be, the, not to be divisive as an African-American or black person, um, the struggles are a little bit more in terms of getting recognition for for the hard work you do, get into those spaces where you have to network and meet the right people. So how can the black and brown people navigate those those areas and get to those points to be successful? Um, I, I think a lot of it from just being consistent, understanding that, okay, yeah, there may be some barriers, but I believe that across a lot of spectrum, there's all barriers. I think when it comes to black and brown people, there are barriers a whole lot. It um, can be a little more strenuous, you know, but if you want this, you can actually get it. The other part is that when it comes to mentoring, you know, a lot of people are willing to help somebody. You know, I think for me, my satisfaction is to see somebody grow, to see them manufacture some things they want to manufacture in their lives, their behavior, their businesses, and, you know, and just getting them to be that entrepreneur. One of my greatest fears was becoming an entrepreneur. I didn't know what I was getting into. I didn't know how to do it. Yes, I did the research, but it's still I'm not on that, 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 that fear, that I'm apprehensiveness, like, failure, you know, if I fail, what happens, you know, mm -hmm. and it's okay to fail. And that's what I have mm -hmm. to understand. I think um, other people may be going through the same thing too. Well, how I look if I fail? That's fine. You're mm -hmm. going to look the same if you fail as the same if you succeed. You know, you have to get out there and try it. Um, I think that if we start looking at giving some structure and some classes and some mentoring to helping 
um, folk that want to get into these type of fields that want to manufacture these things and um, help them along the way. You know, give them the knowledge, give them the consistency, mm -hmm. give them the confidence that's necessary to do it. Because unfortunately, we get older, you know, and we mm -hmm. don't want to get older and take that knowledge with us. We need to put it back out to the next generation so they can just really expand and, and grow in these events. <laughs> so in terms of dealing with those barriers, you know, I, I heard uh, a lecture yesterday, the keynote speaker. Mm -hmm. and he was mm -hmm. saying how diligent he was, how consistent he was. I continue to repeatedly try the same thing but different ways. I think it's the same way from our field, too. Looking at other ways we can get successful, and not just for ourselves, but to build up the industry because yes. we're such great yes. professionals. Yes, yes, yes. And there are, there's new blood coming in every year. Person's taking the course, getting certified, and then they want to look into other areas and they don't get that mentorship. Yeah. So what do you suggest to persons who are in the field, especially persons like you, African-Americans, black and brown people who struggle for years and years? Sometimes you could have did this maybe 20 years ago, but being that you want to recognize for your abilities, it took you longer than someone else, someone else who looked at in a different light. So what do you say to those people who don't, those persons who don't see people like you being successful? They see others being successful and not seeing persons who look like them right. and saying, I could do that too. For example, Barack Obama right. became a president, so so many black and brown boys and girls now aspire to be the president of the United States. So we don't see that many African-American entrepreneurs at the top owning their own businesses. So uh, what do you suggest to persons like you who have businesses, not to sell the information, but to give that information out? How do you um, suggest those persons give out that information to help the younger generation or the upcoming persons that come in the field grow? I think you know, Larry, it has to be um, dynamics for communication. We have to communicate. Mm -hmm. We have to have dialogue. Without that, if we keep it to ourselves, we don't communicate with other people, mm -hmm. we don't have dialogue. I think also, again, we need to be doing speaking, doing some engagements. If it's mm -hmm. on, you know, truthfully, I like to see it done on the region level and see how that expands. Because I met a lot of young um, first time or beginning uh, speakers, and I was happy to collaborate with them to see them develop. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a great thing. It's more so watching them grow as opposed to watching myself grow up, you know, like that. I, it's not about right. me, it's about the, right. the business. The other part that I, I, I want to say is that when it comes to young folk, when you first coming into it, try to get into power with a chapter because we are losing so much, you know, when it comes to people um, being in chapters and get mm -hmm. that engagement, get that influence, get that education. And it's really, really cool when you can do that. And now you have a networking opportunity to start mm -hmm. building up and you start, you know, talking to like-minded people you start asking questions, you start yes. seeing other people and say, hey, I like that yes. idea, you might yes. want to use it, I want to take yes. that back with me. Yes. And I yes. think yes. that's what the conferences should bring, and that's what mm -hmm. they do, that's what the regional conferences bring, and that's what they do. And mm -hmm. as we continue to work on this, I, I see it going in a great direction. Yeah. I'm really excited yes. about what I'm starting to see, especially with the first conference in two years. Mm -hmm. So it's really going in the right direction. Yeah, appreciate, appreciate. I appreciate your advice. Um, I've known you for a while also. You've been a good mentor. Um, I see you taking chances of business, you're taking chances of your career, you're doing different things, you're not